Good morning, everyone. Today we will continue from where we left off yesterday. Yesterday we concluded with the presentation of relative bodhicitta. Today we begin with the corresponding presentation of absolute bodhicitta. That so the kunzo Nam the main difference between relative and absolute bodhicitta is in their uh, focus, or you could say object. Relative bodhicitta is focused on uh, dharmas, uh, things, and absolute bodhicitta is concerned with, or you could say focused on dharmata or the nature of things. Therefore, usually when we say to generate bodhicitta or use the term bodhicitta, we are referring to relative bodhicitta. Absolute bodhicitta really refers to the wisdom which realizes emptiness. We call it bodhicitta, but it is not something that one generates in the manner of generating relative bodhicitta. Dan 
As was the case with relative bodhicitta, the cultivation of absolute bodhicitta here is divided into two aspects, the practice of meditation and the post-meditation uh, application. The practice of meditation here is the cultivation of a state free from fixation. The post-meditation practice is to come to recognize the unreality of uh, potential objects of attachment and aversion. The, f- the first of these, the practice of meditation on Absolute Bodhicitta, is described in stanza 22, which is found on the bottom of page 27 and the top of page 28, which says, Whatever appears, all of this is one's own mind, and the mind itself has always been beyond any kind of conceptual extreme. Knowing that, it is the practice of a bodhisattva to abstain from mental engagement in um, reifying the attributes of, per- of perceived subject and object. Jene Tiggy then the External and internal phenomena, the things that we experience or that appear to us, appear real to us, as though they exist as we experience them, independently of our experience of them. But that independent reality that we attribute to appearances is a mere superimposition 
of our minds. Because appearances do not exist outside or beyond uh, the experience of them. Secondly, that mind to which the things appear has always, from the very beginning, been beyond or without any kind of complexity, which means any kind of state of being uh, existent or non-existent. Therefore, knowing that this is the nature both of apparent objects and of the subjective perceiver or mind, bodhisattvas do not entertain in their minds reification of the perceived attributes of objects and subjects, but rest in a state of emptiness beyond elaboration, beyond complexity. And this is how bodhisattvas practice in meditation, or cultivate in meditation, absolute bodhicitta, otherwise put, the wisdom of emptiness. And then as you guess at home is sambo, the shungi, zababu, guess at home is sambo, krang, zeshabe, the sung shinar nalo in air, the jeme gingana, you make nyaksha chas, the jesunare. Chetamje Tene In another of his writings, Yatse Tome Zongpo, who wrote the 37 practices of the Bodhisattva, wrote, rest non-dually in the state beyond elaboration, which is instruction that comes to the same, has the same meaning as found in this stanza, which is that based on the fact that all things, all dharmas, both uh, perceived objects and the perceiving subject or mind, are empty, which means that they are beyond elaboration, beyond any kind of ontological concept. Knowing that, one does not engage in or entertain uh, concepts about them, such as true existence or non-existence. And that is how uh, one cultivates absolute bodhicitta in even placement or meditation. Dabena,可以拿了呀。等你,就是没这边的嘛,大概的这,差个钱不,等把,可能说了,可以拿了这个,差个钱不,你们呢,就是没这边的嘛,就是差个钱不,你们呢,就是了呀。啊,那是个什
这个老一辈解决开玩笑 Within the Kaju tradition, one of the foremost practices is the practice of Mahamudra, which has come down from uh, Lord Maitripa. And the particular teachings of Maitripa are often called the Amaniskara cycle, or the cycle of freedom from mental engagement. Amaniskara is explained in two ways. Sometimes it's explained as mental engagement in emptiness, more commonly translated literally explained as the absence of freedom from mental engagement. In either case, this refers to the uh, authentic way to practice even placement on an absolute bodhicitta. The same point is made by Benga Jampo Zompo in the lineage supplication, uh, which we uh, recited earlier and commonly chant. In the uh, stanza which says, it is said that absence of distraction is the main body of meditation. To the meditator who rests in uh, whatever, fre- in, who rests freshly in whatever thought arises without contrivance or alteration, grant your blessing that meditation be free from conceptualization. What is being described here is resting without alteration in the sense of without the imposition or superimposition of concepts such as it is this or it isn't this and so on and remaining one-pointed in a state free from mental engagement in such uh, concepts and relaxing in that state and that seems to be the way to authentically cultivate absolute bodhicitta. Mm the the next stanza deals with post meditation and specifically the post meditation of uh, absolute bodhicitta, which is the relinquishment of uh, imputation of reality to potential objects of attachment and aversion. Although our meditation or even placement may not be fully authentic, it may merely be concordant, still at the end of a session of practice we eventually have to arise, leave the meditation room or shrine room, and enter the state of post-meditation, or sometimes called subsequent attainment. This is the state in which we become involved in various activities. That's 
The next stanza, stanza 23 on page 28, deals with the first aspect of this, how in post-meditation to relinquish or abandon fixation on the reality of potential objects of attachment. The stanza says, the pleasurable objects uh, that we encounter or desirable objects that we encounter are just like the appearance of a rainbow uh, in the summer. Although they are beautiful in appearance, uh, they are unreal. And it is therefore the practice of a bodhisattva not to regard them as real and thereby to relinquish craving and fixation on them. Tante, Kandrizibe now A pleasant object is something that a particular person finds pleasant or agreeable. It could be a friend, it could be a, something nice to see, a pleasant sound, a pleasant smell or taste. All of these are potential objects of attachment. But all of these are in fact like the um, beautiful colors of a rainbow that we see in the summer. A rainbow is of course beautiful, but it does not exist as it appears. So therefore, it is just as we know not to uh, crave or fixate on the transitory and really essenceless or non-existent appearance of a rainbow, it is the practice of a bodhisattva not to crave or become attached to any kind of agreeable or pleasant appearance. So this is the instruction on how in post-meditation to relinquish attachment to pleasant objects. The next stanza, stanza 24, also on page 28, just is, uh, corresponds with that and describes how to uh, relinquish or abandon fixation on uh, unpleasant appearances that might produce aversion. It says, the different kinds of suffering that we experience are like a dreaming of one of your children dying. Taking confused appearances as real is unnecessarily exhausting. Therefore, when met with adverse conditions, it is the practice of a bodhisattva to see them as delusion. Mm-hmm. 
这些胖的卡萨吉你们拿了心你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你
ကရဆနာခရန်ငါဆိုတော့နောက်ဝါနာကြီးကြီးယူကြည့်လာတံပွဲညီနဲ့ထွန်ညွတ်ရောမှာတဲ့တံပွဲထွန်ညွတ်
Tonya This has uh, very real implications for our lives. It's throughout our lives, um, because we fixate on the reality of perceived objects or appearances, um, we suffer a great deal. For example, by identifying certain uh, objects as pleasant, such as friends, or if we're in a couple, our partner, and so on, we cause ourselves a lot of suffering through the intensity of our fixation on this supposed reality as such. Similarly, when we identify people as enemies, people who cause us problems, think of them as causes of our suffering, whom we find it hard to forgive, and so on, this fixation uh, causes us a great deal of misery as well. In both cases, the cause here is not, uh, some, is not the attribute perceived in the, in the pleasant or unpleasant object. It's our fixation on, our, the, on the falsely perceived reality of the object. In other words, it, these attributes are not present in the pleasant or unpleasant object. They're produced by the input that we uh, add to the whole situation that our minds create. And it is our own input, the creation of our own mind, that makes these uh, concepts about, about people and things seem so real to us. But really, um, they are just uh, the creations of our mind. Understanding this and putting this into practice is why the cultivation of emptiness uh, is important. Otherwise, simply saying all things are inherently empty does not really do very much or help you at all. The function of the cultivation of meditation on emptiness and so forth is to reduce and eventually eradicate your fixation on the perceived reality of appearances and so on. It is that eradication of fixation that will relieve your suffering. Simply spouting highfalutin dharma jargon will not really do you much good at all. <laughs> The next section is um, training in the um, various aspects of training or guidelines of the cultivation of bodhicitta, both relative and absolute. There are five sections to this, um, the, first of, the first of which is the practice of the six perfections. That 
你说我不能没有这个，天气冷，那那没有没有这个，今天多安静，晒了呢，说话的，今天不正常。天气预测如何的？虽然没有，但对面中的现在如果对我讲没呢，天气是西边，对面没有，虽然说安静晒了呢，
What's hard about this is actually putting it into practice. 다 집에 버리신 분들 찾아와 있는 짐바사를 가르치셨어요. 짐바사를. 잘라봐 미신다를 대봐 잠시 스위어르베서나. 근데 가서 미신다를 칼라데 미신다를 배 가서 이제 괴매바라 괴대 세매바라 세대. 아, 안 다는 신기 다시 캄바매바라 캄바데 이제 제가 드릴 잠시는 짐바스요 말이죠. 그래서 짐바사리 보란 가수로 다시 치기 가수로 지 남주를 삼지 진진 잠시 관례하고 왔어. 그 example if we consider the first perfection generosity what is the perfection of generosity is it simply a giving something to another person like giving food to someone who is hungry or clothes to someone who is naked or a house to someone who has no home it's more than that it's more than simply the external act or, or a manner of giving <laughs> Really, generosity is the attitude of giving, being giving, and motivated by that attitude, actions of giving of body and or speech. But the real force, the real power behind generosity is the motivation, the mental attitude of giving. Therefore, it was taught by the uh, great Kadamba Geshe's that what the root of generosity comes down to is a freedom from fixation and attachment. A freedom uh, from attachment. Dana Singi Geshe Sharawe Karasuma Arasana So therefore, it, it was said by Geshe Charawa. 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 By Geshe Charawa, I, I am not going to speak to you of the benefits of giving but of the, uh, the flaws or the problems uh, of fixation or attachment, because it comes down to the same thing. Jimbe 
这个是我们的人生活的人生活的人生活的人生活的人生活的人生活的人生活的人生活的人生活的人生活的人生活的人生活的人生活的人生活的人生活的人生活的人生活的人生活的人生活的人生活的人生活的人生活的人生活的人生
uh, to others together with the potential basis of such harm. That is the basic form of moral discipline. In addition to that, on top of that, a bodhisattva's moral discipline must also include actively helping others, actively benefiting others. <coughs> Sambadi Sambadi, when we say that the, um, the essence of moral discipline is the mind which abandons or turns away from a wrongdoing, defined as all that is harmful to others together with the potential basis of such harm, Principally, this refers to the first of the three types of moral discipline of a bodhisattva, which is called the moral discipline of governance or vows or abstention from wrongdoing. When we think of this, um, however, it's important to understand that even this first moral discipline is not simply a matter of outward appearance. It is not enough to adopt the uh, appearance or wear the uniform of a monastic it is necessary that within one's mind one has the um, stable intention to avoid all that is harmful to others and the basis of such. Especially if one is practicing the moral discipline of a bodhisattva, which is the perfection of moral discipline, then this, this, one's motivation for moral discipline is of paramount importance. One might say that in the moral discipline of a shravaka, it is primarily governance uh, of one's physical and verbal behavior that is of importance. But in the case of the moral discipline of a bodhisattva, as always with the bodhisattva path, it is one's mind, one's motivation that is of primary importance. So in addition to a flawless moral conduct, it is necessary that the bodhisattva's motivation for their flawless moral conduct be a love and affection for other beings. A simple uh, a freedom from flaws of conduct is not enough. Jesus, I'm gonna make you share in this time. Luigi, some last year. That take it there to make it the Miguel 
Yani iyi ki sunma diyeyim mi ki ve leyi lamza şey oluyor. Da çancı sözü tabi nar oluyor. Yani ki karşı oluyor ki ama ama dün bu diye çana Kur'an karşı var genel olarak. Madalcık çıma diye nesim yavacam şey ki Kur'an dombada genel olarak ya. Yine çancı olsun bana Allah. Ama dün bu ne de çıma diye diye. Çünkü enfesat şey. Nesim. Bir şey yapayım yine. Tadi. Nesim. Karşı bir şey. Yani lamsancı. Simci şeyler ne be sabah yapıldı ya. Çancı olsun benim ne de. Karşı bir şey. Kadu. Gava çarpı yani bir şey. あの、いや、でも、インドさんで言うんじゃねえ。ティギチャネ。だ、ネスミエメサディ。ハジャンギタ、カンダラジ。コギュルギニズ。とつコトキビニズチャレ。ティンビンタティトーディ、ナムギン
This is based on a deeper understanding of what moral discipline is. 제나 남도는지 룽아가 차지 아주 참참 섭섭치고 그래서 미 你呢生病在了十四天要完了十四天要完了十四天要完了十四天要完了十四天要完了十四天要完了十四天要完了十四天要完了十四天要完了十四天要完了十四天要完了十四天要完了十四天要完了十四天要完了十四天要完了十四天
It's been taught that if uh, you regard yourself as inferior to others or you see yourself as lowly, then by letting go of our usual arrogance, uh, you will be more patient. Patience is extremely important aspect of uh, Bodhisattva's training because without patience uh, we will be vengeful. We will seek to respond to the aggression of others uh, with our own aggression. And as long as we are vengeful, we can't even begin the Mahayana, where uh, the, the, the starting point is to respond uh, to the aggression of others with only benefit and, and not reprisal. Therefore, patience is indispensable from the beginning. Nevertheless, patience is often misunderstood to be a forcing oneself to, to put up with things or forcing oneself to do things that one uh, cannot bear to or does not want to do. And this is not patience. Then <laughs> Didn't <laughs> Controsadilla, Chosen energy, 
Kondrugi Nimid is a chambers. The Dega Tony Kora Sobasadi Kora Kashwadaji Nimid Tembe Tony Kora Sobasad Kashwa Sertware Chamadobe Utu Jazar Stigi Sandaji Nisamar Sabta A lot of people um I have the feeling that the practice of patience means pretending to be a nicer person uh, than you are uh, or than you feel. And sometimes um, non-Buddhists will expect us as Buddhists to be extraordinarily nice to people all the time. And if we're not as nice as they expect or not, as, uh, not exactly what they expect, then they'll say, well, aren't you Buddhist? Aren't you a Mahayana practitioner? Aren't you supposed to be really, really nice? The practice of patience is not simply forcing yourself um, to uh, seem nice all the time. It is not forcing yourself to uh, put up with what you can't uh, put up with. It's not saying to yourself, I'm a Mahayana practitioner, therefore I'd better just deal with it. I'd better put up with it, whatever it is. The practice of patience starts with recognizing the problem of anger, recognizing how many problems that anger causes, and recognizing that anger in itself is dispensable, that it's not a big deal and it's not something we need. It's being able to look at your anger and say, I don't need you. I will be fine. I can function perfectly well without you, anger. And so there really are two aspects to it, because one of the things that makes it hard for us to be patient is not having enough accustomation or enough of a momentum of virtuous states of mind. The other thing that we need at the same time is a strong understanding, recognition of the problems uh, that are caused by uh, anger. So if you have both of these things present, on the one hand the momentum of virtuous states of mind, and on the other hand, the recognition of how many problems anger causes, then uh, these are the sources of patience. Mm. Covered somewhere that you've been a conjugal, that you've been a bit of the Samsung Kabji Yoshaman somewhere. Did it with some time ago? Is that you go to let it go? Did it with some time ago? Chesa, Tijun Zel Dene, Samsung Sava, Kondro. ま、そこ、ごめん、ごめんちゃうと。コントローラーね、あぶと。ああ、コントローラー。エンジニアにべ、そうそう、ギュエブレチェス。コントローラーベカレ、コントローラー、ラーマツァンジョワンドマタワチ
and that you can let go of it. Letting, then letting go of that anger, that is the practice of patience. Attempting to cover it up or conceal it uh, is not patience. The fourth perfection is diligence. And again, in Nagarjuna's Ratnavali, he has a very concise definition for what we mean by diligence. It is enthusiasm for good, enthusiasm for that which is virtuous. So therefore we need to stipulate what we mean by diligence here. It doesn't mean to be diligent in anything such as diligent in wrongdoing. It means to be diligent, enthusiastically diligent in what is good. Tata now, the early Kadamba masters defined the best diligence as giving up uh, pointless uh, activities. And giving up pointless activities or mundane activities is actually giving up one of the three types of laziness. One type of laziness, what we could call active laziness, is the laziness which is attachment to uh, negative um, uh, actions. And so the um, giving up mundane or pointless actions is how to overcome the laziness which is attachment to negative actions. <laughs> Jimmy, Diligence really depends upon the meditation on impermanence. If you take impermanence to heart, then uh, you will both observe uh, momentary, uh, constant changes in everything and um, be very much aware of your own impending death. The result of this recognition of impermanence is uh, you will prioritize, aware that your lifespan is uncertain and that you certainly can't do everything in one life, you will choose those actions or activities that are of the greatest importance. And so it seems that the uh, diligence and the prioritization that uh, is the basis of diligence can only be gained uh, through or achieved through meditation on impermanence. Lesson. 
Shigura Samare. So um, I better not go on too much or I'll run out of stuff to say um, or to cover this afternoon and tomorrow morning. ตะนะกาลันคาเชกาซานดิ <coughs> A few days ago, um, I presented the Akshobhya Empowerment, and uh, no doubt uh, some of you uh, were present. And some of the things that uh, we came up or were discussed during that process are relevant to our topic now because in a sense Akshobi is very much related to the perfection of patience. Send <laughs> And the reason why the, the Buddha um, Akshobhya Mitrukpa is called uh, Mitrukpa or unshakable is because when he first generated bodhicitta, among his particular aspirations, the principal one was the vow, um, from today onward until I achieve Buddhahood, I will never get angry at any being under any circumstances for any reason. In that way, each and every Buddha uh, makes particular uh, uncommon aspirations. For example, our teacher, Buddha Shakyamuni, I made 500 unique aspirations. Similarly, Akshobhya made many, of which the principal one is the vow never to get angry. We need to try to emulate him. We need to try to see whether we can uh, not get angry for one day or for one week or for how long. If we don't try, uh, we won't get anywhere. And the thing about trying is that something that sounds or looks very difficult before you try it may not be as difficult as you expect when you do try it. That they are Jesus, Sarah Sevicolia, Ziggy 
Sometimes we are not, we don't really know um, what we're capable of. We don't really know the extent of our own ability until we try. <laughs> 